one time um I got banned from my lives because someone didn't like I was talking about Jesus. So there was a whole whole ordeal with that where I had to talk to TikTok and all that stuff, but we haven't had a problem with it since and it's been fun just to talk about them and just be able to have that connection with people and be spiritual and have a faith with them and it's awesome. Welcome back to another Zoom session, the Spiritual DNA Sessions here. Pastor Darren Early Wine, your host as always, and uh, love these sessions that we've been doing, love the people that we're getting to meet and the stories that we're getting to hear. And uh, what I'm really excited about this episode is this is a, a one of a two-part episode we're going to do. And so how we're going to frame this episode today is it's going to be kind of a pre-spiritual DNA, post-spiritual DNA interview. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to sit down with um, somebody who is has been really seeking after God's call in their life, uh, has been developing some really, really cool stuff that I know you're going to be excited to hear about. Uh, but I, what we're going to do is um, we're here with Abby Shank, and Abby's not taking spiritual DNA yet. But I know what's going to be cool to watch is Abby has naturally sought after things that she is passionate about. And what she has discovered is that God has given her great gifts in those areas of passion. One of the things that we talk about in spiritual DNA is that is that if you have come to a place where you've been awakened to a relationship with Jesus and you are seeking after him, the greatest compass to find your purpose in life are the things that you're most passionate about. And, um, and Abby's an example of that. So it's going to be so cool. We're going to talk today. We're going to talk about her book, which I've got right here. We're going to talk about her growing uh, TikTok ministry and, and following, which is really freaking cool. And, uh, and then in a couple of weeks, we're going to come back together after she completes spiritual DNA. And we're going to kind of team up the results with where she's been. And so, uh, Abby, I'm so glad to have you on today. Welcome to the Spiritual DNA Zoom sessions. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. I've been ready. I'm, I'm excited. Rock and roll. Now, Abby, you, uh, I don't know if you'll take the, uh, set the record for the youngest guest we've had on a Spiritual DNA or a Born to Be interview. I think maybe we had, we had, you know what, we had a couple of high school girls that were doing some mission work in uh, Rotan, Honduras or something like that. But oh, wow. I don't know, if, but they were about your same age. How old are you, Abby? I'm 18. 18. So you're a senior, correct? Mm-hmm. I think I've known you and your family for at least, at least six, seven years, probably, maybe more. So yep. I guess I've, I guess I've watched you grow up in some ways. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just, We've known you for a while. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And what's always impressed me, Abby, is um, you've always uh, carried yourself with such poise. You've always been so well-spoken. Uh, and you've always had um, what I've seen as, as a drive. You've always known things you've wanted to do. And I want to dive into that because one of the things we talk about you know, in spiritual DNA is that this is a process of becoming who you already are, is that God has created you with gifts and abilities, the way he's hardwired your mind and your emotions and are all to, to come together with your spirit. And so discovering your life's purpose and actually um, discovering your worth, it's not about finding something outside of yourself. It's really about finding what is already within you, that you've already been given everything you need. It's just a process of growing up within it in maturity. And so for you, I guess, you know, I want to start with the book because there's not too many 18 year olds I know that write a book that's this thick, which uh, mm -hmm. The Era of Eve is your first book you've put out. It is literally over 600 pages. Explain the book to us, Abby. All right. So it's a sci-fi, so it takes place in the future and it talks about that all of female kind has been wiped out. So the entire earth is just men. And so the so the book is written from the point of view of Leah Faith, who is um, the last, one of the last women on earth. And so she's trying to get to this place called Eden, which is like the last safe haven for all the women in the world. And she gets there and while going there, um, there's a lot of biblical ties in there. I included one of my favorite verses, which was Deuteronomy 23.5, which is one of my favorites, my screensaver right now. And so it just ties into the fact um, that, you know, the worst of your life, the things that you think have ruined you, God will turn your curse into a blessing and will help it become your strength. And it also ties in to forgiveness, because in the book, Leah is wronged by a lot of people that have hurt her, have scarred her, and um, 
it just goes into the fact, you know, God showed her mercy, so she has to show mercy to those who she doesn't even think deserve, deserve it. So that's something I always wanted to do. If I was going to go into a book, I always wanted to include it, um, the message of God, because, um, you know, Tommy, Tommy said to me once, um, whatever you do, you do for the glory of God. If you have gifts, he, give it, he gave them to you, so you make it up to him. So that's something I'm actually kind of proud of. Um, we included the verse on forgiveness in the back if you want me to read it to you. Yeah, Sorry. let's check it out. All right. So for if, you, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. And that's Matthew 6, 14 through 15. And that's just something that really resonated with me because jumping into TikTok, and it's been super fun. I love it. It's, it's built my relationship with God. I feel like I'm working with him. But um, with that being said, a lot of people have attacked me. Um, not just non-believers that think that what I'm doing is complete nonsense, but also followers of Christ who think what I'm doing is one person said blasphemous, another person said disrespectful, and just, I could go mm. on. And so that being so it sounds, said- it sounds like some of it is what you wrote about in the book, happening to the character in the book is now kind of like it's life is imitating art in somewhat now is just you're kind of in that journey experiencing some of the same lessons that you wrote about, which is kind of intriguing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I thought about that because whenever I think of those things, I get a little bitter and I don't like to admit it, but I'm like, I don't really want to forgive this person. I'm like, I wrote an entire book on this. So I gotta <laughs> but, um, you so got 700 pages that say you have to forgive this person. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Abby, I want to talk. I want to talk about about that because it's. I would say the average, you know, eighteen year old, and you didn't start writing this when you're eighteen because it's as big as it is. You've been writing it for for a while. Is the average, you know, sixteen, seventeen year old girl? I don't think is thinking. Yeah, I really want to go after writing a six hundred page sci fi, not like you know, you know, action type novel. They just don't, mm -hmm. and so. Take us back, I guess, to the, the very beginning. When did you first start thinking about that you wanted to write stories or did you start seeing and thinking of things as stories? So I've been writing stories since I was little, little. So my mom has this giant box of just these picture books I would write for her. And they're my favorite things to look at because it goes all the way back to like I was five years old and my mom would have to write it out for me and I'd just draw the pictures. But um, I didn't start writing like, chapter books until I was probably fifth grade and I wrote um like a wasn't even that long like a 50 page chapter book and um it says in the, in the era I've actually it's dedicated to Mr. Lowell who's my fifth grade teacher awesome guy he read every single book I wrote like not a lot of teachers do that like it was awesome he's like my favorite teacher to this day and he read every book I ever wrote and so Moving on, I kept writing because I really, really liked it. Um, not so much the writing part, but just the making up the stories. So mm. I liked storytelling and I wasn't necessarily that good at writing. But in order to make the story um, more readable, more interesting, I did have to adapt to become a better writer. So it is something that I really enjoy. I really love. And then um, I got into my first real chapter book. It was called Feral. It never um, made the publishing, but it was huge. It's 400 pages on computer paper, which would relate to about a thousand pages on paper this size. So it was a big book and I wrote that for a year and I read through it and I was just like, I don't really like this that much. Cause like I said, I wrote it for a year and your writing style grows as you write. So like half of the book, I really liked the first half. I was like, we're not going to put that out there. And so um, I went, I had the idea for the Arab Eve. I had been writing down notes in my phone about it while I was writing Feral. I was really excited to start writing it. I knew I was going to write. Um, Feral had um, biblical points too, but I wanted to make it more prominent in this book. And I really enjoyed it. I loved the way I had written it. I loved the story. I loved the characters. And it was just it was something I was really proud of. And I told my family, hey, we got to get this done. They're like, let's do it. And so 
it's been a ride ever since. Um, I actually, it's going to be a series. We got the second book coming out in the next couple of months. The third book is done and the fourth book, um, we're in the writing process, process of. So, so you've already written the follow-up to the era of Eve. Yeah, the whole series is almost done. It's just a matter of publishing and proofreading. So how long does it take you to write, how long did it take you to write the follow-up? This book took me surprisingly long. This was like six months. Um, the third book is about a little less, probably like a third of its size. And that one took three months. The, wow. yeah. And then the third one took two months. And then the fourth one, I started writing about three weeks ago and I'm almost halfway through. Goodness gracious, Abby. I love it. <laughs> here's, here's, here's something that is interesting to me, Abby, is that, like I said, you are on the younger side of folks we've had on uh, either the Born to Be podcast or, or uh, here on the, on the brand new Zoom sessions we're doing. And, but here's the, here's the story that I hear often, Abby, is there's somebody who is in their, um, you know, late 20s, mid 30s or 40s. And I ask them the question that I just asked you about early on, you know, uh, visions or, or, or passions. And a lot of times they'll tell a story like you said about, yeah, well, in fifth grade, I started writing these books and whatever, but then I never did anything with it. And then I rediscovered it when I was 30 or something. And then they have, they have this big, you know, chunk of, of, I guess, regret, we could say, that they didn't do anything with, with those gifts. And so one of the things we talk about in spiritual DNA is, I learned this from Kevin Myers, a great, uh, great mentor of mine, distance mentor of mine, who said, there's two kinds of pain in the world and you get to choose which pain you, you, you experience most often. There's the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. The pain of discipline is doing the thing that you don't really want to do and it hurts right now, but it feels great later. It's kind of like the pain of working out every day, right? It hurts, but you're glad you're doing it. Pain of regret is no upfront pain but a lot of long-term pain. And so a lot of people deal with the pain of regret that they regret they didn't write that first book in high school. They regret that they didn't go after that, that childhood dream they had. And um, you've been able to choose the pain of discipline, like you just talked about, to crank out the books you're doing, like you're sitting by yourself, you're in your room, you're cranking this stuff out. You're, and I'm guessing there's probably not a ton of your friends at high school that were like, yeah, that makes sense, write a book. So, so I mean, what has given you the courage and the drive to say, I'm going to choose the pain of discipline. I'm going to actually make these books happen. Was there a turning point moment or is it just something you've just grown into? Not necessarily. So when I wrote, I talked about it, the book Feral, I thought, okay, this is the book I'm going to publish. And we have a family friend who's more like family Matt. He read that entire book and I was like, yeah, this is good. This is actually really good. Let's do this. And then I went through it. And I was like, I don't think so. And um, so then we started on the era of Eve and it never really occurred to me that I couldn't do it. I did wonder if um, anyone would enjoy it because like everyone that was reading it was my family and family friends like, okay, they're going to be a little biased. And so that was something that preyed on my mind. But, you know, I prayed a lot over this book when it was near the publishing process. I had about 50,000 followers on TikTok at the time. So I thought I could use that. Um, I was worried about the switch from Christian content to promoting because I didn't want um, anyone to feel like um, I was using God as kind of a leg up in the world. And that's something I also worried about. But we did, we promoted it on TikTok. And we've sold about 400 books. Um, and it's been in Australia, Canada, Germany, the UK. It's been everywhere. So I love it. It's really cool. So after that, I was just kind of like, okay, people are enjoying it. And so far, we've only gotten five and four star reviews on Amazon, which is awesome. And I was like, okay, I'm pursuing this. So the doubt's kind of gone out the window. Mm -hmm. um, not that. So it's just something that I've gotten really, really excited about. Like, I feel like God had, this is something that God's put in my path. I don't know if it's what my entire life is going to be. He might call me to do something completely different in the next year or the next week. But um, I think it's something that I can do to further his kingdom, something that I can do to just pursue my passion while also working for him. And it's, I don't know, it's just, it's been a drive. I, it's 
something that I don't feel like I'm working when I do it. I feel like I get excited to do it. Like, okay, I got to get all this done so I can focus on this. And it's just, it's been awesome. It's doesn't even feel like work. It's something I want to be doing for the rest of my life. See, I love that, Abby. I love the way you said it is, is, is discovering that power of passion and uh, the word passion uh, from the Latin is the word paseo, which means suffering. And most times we don't think about that. We, you know, we think about, man, I want to find something I'm passionate about and, and, and do that for the rest of my life. And I think our brain hears, uh, I want to find something that I think is really fun and that I like doing, which it is. But the, the reality of it is for a lot of people, like I'm trying to write, I just wrote a, a really short ebook. I'm trying to write, I'm, I'm in chapter two of the second one. And I tell you what, Abby, it writing for me is not a passion. Communicating is a passion, but I'm I'm a speaker trying to figure out how to write. And and what's interesting is is there for me, there's an element that it feels like suffering because I'm having to to push through it. For me, I'm super passionate about communicating truth about God that can change someone's life. So I'm willing to suffer through trying to figure out how to write. What, what I love that you've discovered, and, and I want, I want you know, folks that are watching this to discover, is that there is an element, there is something that God has given you to do, that when you begin to do it, that even the process of discipline and suffering to do it feels like joy. I mean, as Abby's talking right there, you can see it in her face as she's just like, I want to get everything done so I can get to this. And I'm sure, Abby, as you're, as you're cranking out these chapters, you probably look at the clock and it's like, oh my gosh, like... I've been doing this for hours and it feels like moments. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, exactly. and, and the thing is, we're at a cool place right now, Abby, where, you know, there could be maybe somebody watching this one that's, that's feeling cynical. It's like, oh, well, if I was a high school senior, I'd find time to write a book too, right? Get a job, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and the thing is, yeah, if you're a 40-year-old person with multiple kids and everything, you're probably going to have less time than Abby has, but here's, here's the thing that I want, want that to inspire all of us is, is you've taken the passion you've had and you've gone after it. And, um, and here's what I think is going to be great for you, Abby, is because you've started this process this young in life and you have felt the joy and the actual payoff of taking a dream, dedicating yourself to it, figuring out how to make it actually a tangible thing is my guess is, and my hope for you is that you'll never be able to go back. Is that for the rest of your life, when you get a, a plan, when you get a vision, when you get something that you feel like God is, is asked you to do and that you have the ability to do, I believe that this stepping into this as young as you have in your life is going to mark you with a tenacity to accomplish the dreams and the visions that God places in your life. And so it's just an absolute gift and it's, it's the joy of the pain of discipline uh, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this interview, because I know there are people right now who, who are living with a bunch of pain of regret that they didn't do what you are doing. And I know that your, uh, your tenacity and your passion for what you've created uh, is going to inspire people. And I know, I know when we, when we do this next follow-up interview, after you go through spiritual DNA, we're going to see the way God has created you specifically to make this happen. So Abby, if people want to jump into the book, they get it on Amazon. Is that the best way? Yep. That's the only way right now. <laughs> okay. And so just search the, the era of E by A L shank. Is that what the best way to do it? Yep. Or just the era of E. That's probably the, the easiest way. It should be the top. The era of Eve on Amazon. Go get it. It's blowing up all over the freaking world. Abby. Hello. Yeah. So now I want to, I want to pivot a little bit to this, this newest uh, passion and newest thing uh, blowing up in your life is uh, right now for high school students and I probably college students too, uh, TikTok is absolutely exploding. It's interesting to see over the past like decade, the wave of different social media platforms that, 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 uh, that grow. I, mean, I can think about when MySpace started, I don't know if you were even born when MySpace started and then it's Facebook and it's Instagram and it's Snapchat. And now TikTok is blowing up, which basically, if you don't know what TikTok is, it's a social media platform where you basically record short little videos, usually dancing to songs or doing comedy things, or they're just short videos. Uh, a lot of them are music related, but some of them aren't. Uh, there's different categories. There's comedy, there's sports, there's entertainment. Uh, and Abby, you have gotten started doing these and it is absolutely taken off for you. So let's talk about uh, your TikTok channel and just, um, 
and how that came to came to pass. All right. Well, um, first off, so TikTok before it was TikTok, it was a platform called Musically, and Musically was just an entire app for lip syncing, and it was kind of this like chain platform, is like kind of cringy stuff, and then it transitioned into TikTok, and I was just, I was like, there's no way, like, there's no way I'd ever touch that, like, and then my cousin Connor, who's just a couple years younger than me, we were all eating out at this restaurant, and I looked over his shoulder, and he was watching TikTok, and I'm like, you use that app? And he's like, yes, Abby, it's awesome, I'm like, there's no way, and then we just were kind of scrolling through, and it was really funny stuff, and I was like, yes, I'm getting this, and I didn't think anything of it, I was bored when I got the app, so my tag name became Abby was bored and um, <laughs> immediately um, a whole bunch of Christian content started coming up on my for you page. I was just like, maybe I could do this. And so um, I posted a video and at the time my cousins were just following me and I had like three followers. And so it was super fun. I loved doing it. I had grown up on the Bible. I grew up in church. So it was just it was something I knew. And I just thought, hey, if I'm going to do something, I might as well do it for the glory of God. And I just didn't think anything of it. And then. So what, came, what, were your, this, what were your videos? They were mainly just Bible stories. So like TikTok, it has these things called like sound bites. So the sound bites are something everyone can use. They can make a whole bunch of different videos off this one sound. So like, um, if you remember the song that goes, hey, hey, what, da, da, da. So that was a trend going on for a while. And I tied that to Mary at the tomb when Jesus had just re risen. And so that, I re really was proud of that. I thought it was hilarious. And um, I just continued doing it. Um, Old Testament, New Testament stories tied into those sound bites. And at the time there was this trend going on where, um, it's um the song by AJR. It goes um, but I'm weak. So there's two sides of the screen. One says to go one place. One says to go another. And we were at Tommy's pool, and I was like, "Hey, Tommy, I need you to be Jesus." And without Miss Evie, he's like, "Yes." And so um, we didn't have a Jesus costume at the time. Um, TikTok. I ended up getting a Jesus costume for TikTok. But um, so we wrapped him in like bath towels that like looked like robes. And so one side of the screen says suffer and sin, anxiety, depression, everything under the sun. One said follow Jesus. And I start walking that way, which is not the way you want to go. And um, on the, but I'm weak, Tommy is like holding me, walking me the other way. Kind of like, <laughs> said, like, you know, Jesus is not going to leave you in there. He's going to find you. And that got like 20,000 views. I was like, what? Yeah. This is amazing. And I was just, it was the most exciting thing. And so that got me to like 5,000 followers. And then I made another video a couple of weeks down and that got 200,000 views. And I was like, what is happening? And so I got yeah. to 10,000. Then I made a video. Um, for those of you who don't know what Christian colleges, they have this thing called Ring Before Spring. It's a joke that um, Christian students get married very, very early. And so I made a video on that um, to an SNL skit and it got a million views. Wow. I was just like, this is insane. You were there when it was happening. We were, yeah, I know. it was it's crazy. our um, late summer party. I was like, what is happening? And it was the coolest thing. And so that got me started. A couple of weeks down the road, I made another video that got a mil another million views. And then I kept doing it and I was having so much fun with it. I started growing this following and then I made another video that got a million. And just a couple of weeks ago, I made a video that got a million views. And it was just, it felt amazing to see that I was doing something and that it was, get, that it was liked and that people were relating to it, that it was giving glory to God. People have, it's such an amazing feeling because people have come to me saying that they feel the urge to get closer to him through the videos I make. And it's just an overwhelming feeling. And it's so, yeah. not only is it so much fun, it's so, it feels so powerful to know that yeah. what I'm doing, I'm doing because God has given me this gift and that he has put me on this platform because there's no way I should have gotten the following <laughs> I have. And he just, he was all in that. He was all in TikTok and it was just, it's amazing and it's so exciting and I'm so happy that it's just gotten where it is.
Yeah. I love that you took the risk for it, that you went after it and, and you've just had fun with it and the way it's begun to, to grow and expand. One of the things you've done with it though, Abby, that I want to talk about is that you haven't just put the videos out there for, for people to consume. And, and it's not just been a one way street of you're just sending content out for people to watch is, is you started hosting uh, these TikTok lives where you've been on and answering questions, having dialogue, being there to be more than just a content creator, but you're, you're creating relationship and dialogue with people. Explain, explain those, uh, those lives to us. Okay. So TikTok lives, you can do them after you've gotten a certain amount of followers. And I started it just to goof around. Um, I have a ongoing joke on my page that I am obsessed with veggie tales. So I always have veggie tales playing in the background. And, um, I just started, I, my main purpose was just to talk to people. Like I just wanted to see what they were doing. I had no intention of like talking necessarily about the Bible. Cause I mean, I knew the Bible, but I wasn't a preacher. I'd never, I'd never done anything in like young life or wildlife to where I felt I could teach. I've spoken to people about Jesus, but it was a one-on-one -on -one conversation where I was comfortable. And someone asked something along the lines of that was a, pretty deep question that I didn't know how to answer and I was just like okay so I'm gonna try this and I started talking about the Bible I started talking about what God says and what his heart is his character and it just it started piling up people had question after question some were pretty light like what's your favorite verse or that's a pretty common one but then there was like some scandalous ones that people are usually pretty nervous about talking about and my dad was like off camera going and he was like walking over to like, let's stop this. And I was like, no, I wasn't going to stop it because I got to tell the truth. I can't um, fabricate something to make someone else happy and then offend my God later. That's, it's not worth it. And so I spoke honestly. That being said, I told them God's heart and his love, no matter what sin has done, everything, he loves them for them all the way through. So, mm. and so I just, I kept pursuing it. I do lives weekly I'd say maybe not as much as I probably should but it's become something awesome it's something I love to do and it's something that I get excited about doing um one time um I got banned from my lives because someone didn't like I was talking about Jesus so there was a whole whole ordeal with that where I had to talk to TikTok and all that stuff but we haven't had a problem with it since and it's been fun just to talk about them and just be able to have that connection with people and be spiritual and have a faith with them and it's awesome well you know the only reason i had you on the uh, spiritual dna zoom session is selfishly i just i want to make an appearance in one of your live TikTok <laughs> conversations so it's just dude you know, i just, need you in my tiktok like it would be awesome i'd be like i, I could see it now i'd be like out on the live i'd be saying something like just trying to answer honestly i could see like moving in there like so this is what it says like it would be awesome i you need to be there it's all gonna right be so much i'll fun. do it i'll do it i can't wait to make my debut on tiktok i'm sure my my teenage boys would be like dad you can't get off of tiktok what are you doing but i'd love to i'd love to come on and, and, and be a part of one of your episodes uh so let's 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 set that up before uh, before the quarantine is over we'll make it happen but abby what about um I guess one thing that is is intriguing to me is you you just keep stepping into these areas of passion. God keeps blessing and, and opening doors to to make a greater impact. And what's intriguing is uh, this is your senior year. It's obviously gotten uprooted by a you know global pandemic. Um, you had to miss prom. You had to miss all the regular senior into into school stuff. Um, and so you're about to transition into a whole different phase of life, you know, this post uh, high school, you know, college years. And, and it's at this point that most people at least kind of start thinking about where's their life going? You know, what major do I want to pursue? What is career going to look like? And so as you're at this transition and, and you've had probably quite a bit of time to think about it, cause you've been stuck in your house for weeks now. Um, where has where God taken your imagination? Where's your thoughts going right now as far as this next season? And, and, and kind of how has God been speaking to you during this kind of unusual season? Um, <laughs> well, as far, as far as college goes, I'm, I'm going to a Christian college. But as far as like I'm, what I'm majoring in, I have no clue. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, I'm just kind of happy where I am right now. Um, I'm having fun making TikToks. I'm having fun. Um, 
I love being creative. If I'm not creating something, I feel like I get in this state of like kind of sadness almost. Like mm. I got to be doing something creative. I have to be making something I'm proud of. So in this quarantine, it's just, it's the entire thing has been writing. I've been contacting my, um, my illustrator that does the covers. I've been writing like crazy. Um, when the era of Eve is done, I have like 10 other book ideas that I'm going to start on. It's, it's the entire thing. Like it's a horrible, horrible thing that's going on in our country right now. And a lot of the people are facing just the repercussions of it. But for me, it's almost been a blessing in disguise because the entire time I have been working, I've been creating and it's just, it's something that I'm happy with right now. Like, of course I'm looking to the future, but my future that I'm seeing, it's everything I'm doing right now. It's mm. building something greater on TikTok. It's making more books. It's reaching more people. It's, I feel like where I am right now has been the highlight of a lot of things right now. And it's awesome. And I'm just passionate about yeah. everything that's going on. And <laughs> I don't know. Um, I haven't, I mean, I've thought about college and I've thought, but what I'm thinking about college is, am I going to have time to write? Am I going to have time to TikTok? Which probably shouldn't be what I'm thinking about. It be about. <laughs> hey, what the heck be, am I going to do? No, <laughs> you could think a lot about a lot worse things about uh, what you do in college uh, than when you can write and when you can TikTok. I think you're in a good headspace. Uh, I love it, Abby. And here's what I can't wait for is, um, and here's what I, what I hope for you and for people that will watch this follow-up episodes we're going to do is, um, I could be surprised, but after taking over 3,000 people through spiritual DNA, I don't think I'm going to be surprised at all. I think you're going to go through the spiritual DNA course. Uh, you're going to go through the assessments. And when we come back together here in a couple of weeks, I think we're, what we're going to see is uh, that God has perfectly made you for the success and the impact that you're having right now. And what I love about that, what I'm, what I'm excited for you is there's an amazingly powerful moment, Abby, when you, when you realize that you absolutely make sense, that you're not an accident, that you're not making stuff up, that you're not just, you know, whatever the, the, the doubt filled gremlins, you know, the voices in your head that, you know, you're, you know, and I don't know what they sound like for you, but it could be just a lot of times it, it, the, the enemy attacks us in our, in our greatest strength and our identity, you know, who are you to be writing books and this and this? You're just an 18 year old girl and blah, blah, blah. Whatever the doubts come into your brain. What I'm excited for you is to have, have the moment where you realize I'm having success and I'm moving with momentum to make an impact in people's life because I'm stepping into the woman that God created me to be. And my prayer for you, and what I'm excited to see as we come back together this next episode, is to unpack some of that. And what I hope it does for you, Abby, is what it's done for me is that it it brings you to such um, a higher place and a deeper place, really, of trust in in your heavenly Father to realize that oh my goodness, like you really are that good that you that you would actually make me exceptional at the things that bring me the most joy, and um, for you to have that experience and to have that cemented in your heart and in your mind at 18, um, if you lean into that and continue to chase after that, Abby, uh, you're going to be unstoppable in what you're able to see happen through your life. Because I believe that that is one of the absolute main hurdles that most people get stuck on is that they can't believe that God would be good enough to actually allow them to pursue something that they enjoy or they're passionate about. And we talk about it. I talk about it in one of the spiritual DNA sessions is, is it, it leaves people, leads people to a place where they take all of the good in their life, all their abilities, and they give that to a thing they call their career. And then they take all the junk in their life and all their pain and their sin and their regrets. And, and they give that to the sacred part of their life or to God, which it belongs there. He's the only person that can take those things and bring healing. But what happens is people live a very um, divided life. All the good stuff goes to the career. All the bad stuff goes to God. And they never develop an imagination of how to bring the good, the best of their life uh, to God. And you've already started to figure that out at 18. And so I'm just excited to see where it goes for you and, and, and to go through spiritual DNA so you can begin to put to have some handles where you know I'm not just accidentally good at this. Here are some scientific spiritual facts of why 
I excel at what I'm doing. And I'm just so excited to, to walk with you through that process. I'm excited too, dude. I'm happy. This is going to be cool. <laughs> It's going to be very cool. And it's just, you know, Abby, I love the environment that God's placed you. And I love your family, your mom and dad. You've talked about Tommy, which is your neighbor, uh, Tom and his wife, Tracy, that have been big uh, supporters of our ministry and of spiritual DNA. I love them to death. And, and you have just an amazing community that God has placed you in and people that believe in you and people that, uh, that are cheerleaders for what you're creating. And that's just such a unique gift. And so, um, man, it's, uh, I'm inspired. I can't wait to see where this conversation goes. And more than just this conversation, uh, I honestly, uh, I'm a huge fan and I can't wait to see how God <laughs> continues to, to guide and direct you this next season. So if people want to follow you, Abby, on TikTok, if they already are TikTokers, how can they TikTok follow Abby on TikTok? Okay. <laughs> um, they can find me at Abby underscore was underscore board and then the press follow. <laughs> Abby underscore was underscore board. Mm -hmm. All right, check it out. And you can get the book. Once again, let me grab it so you don't, right here it is, The Era of Eve. Go check it out. Find it on Amazon. Get yourself a copy of it. Uh, all over the world, it's spreading like wildfire, and I absolutely love it. So here's the deal, Abby. You're going to connect. I know Tracy's getting you connected with Spiritual DNA, and uh, we'll reschedule in like a month, let you go through the course, uh, let you absorb some of the material, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll do uh, a report back on that. And if you're watching this and you say, oh my gosh, I got to discover what Abby's discovering. You can go through Spiritual DNA as well. You just got to go to uh, do, uh, spiritualdna.me. That's where the course is. Uh, it's an online course. You watch all the video sessions of me teaching and you can take the assessments. Um, and you can even sign up for some coaching and some follow-ups if you'd like to after that. But uh, the way you take Spiritual DNA, you just go to spiritualdna.me. Uh, and buy the course, uh, and you can go through all the assessments and all the teaching right there. So spiritualdna.me if you would like to get on your own spiritual DNA journey. So Abby, let's uh, let's push pause for a couple weeks, and we'll come back. And by that time, you'll probably have written another book and have another million <laughs> video out there on TikTok. Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> and how about this? Before we get back on one of my interviews, why don't I come over to your place we do one of these TikTok lives and then we can talk about how ridiculous that was on our next interview. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm down. This is going to be fun. Like, <laughs> right. I mean, Abby Shank, she's going to probably be president of the United States before we know it. Uh, she's an absolute all-star. Abby, thanks for taking this time with us. Uh, it's so, so cool. Thank you for having me.